Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 in the downtown Pioneer Plaza in the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Normally I would say beautiful Honolulu, but unfortunately it's a little rainy today and we had a tsunami warning, so we've had some challenges, but it's all going to be good. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the resources that are available to support small businesses in Hawaii. Uh, we are a show that promotes small business and their successes and the owners and how they make it all work. And there are people behind the scenes that, that provide the resources and the support to make sure that that all happens. And today we've got Jamie Lum and Mark Ritchie from DBED and T. Uh, and to come in and explain a little bit more about DBED and what, the, what it does and how it supports small business. And, DBED's actually a pretty big operation, isn't it, Jamie? Uh, Mark, I mean, this is, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Yes, yes it is. Uh, DBED, Department of Business Economic Development and Tourism, and tourism. is the state's economic development agency. So basically charged with uh, you know, economic diversification for the state and, and making sure that you know, we have good quality jobs for our residents. and. And, uh, and so forth. So uh, we do have, Mark and I are from the Business Development and Support Division. So we've been working a lot with uh, small businesses, helping them to export, uh, helping them with some of our programs like uh, enterprise zones that give them some uh, tax breaks and um, uh, community economic development. And so that's our area. Yeah, and uh, it, it's big. It's statewide. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like you said. It, I mean, tourism all by itself is a, a big operation, you know, and you're there to support that. Um, and, and so I want to talk about DBED and, and find out all the different moving parts and all the different departments and, and divisions in there. But first, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, Jamie. Where, did, were you born into this position, or is this something that you kind of uh, evolved into at, at some point? I'm actually. I, I'm in old-timer with DBED. Uh, I came into the department uh, over 25 years ago, but I actually came through tourism. Uh -huh. um, I was working for uh, the Hawaii Hotel Association, which is now the Hawaii Lodge and, and Tourism Association that uh, Mufi heads. And, um, and so I came in, I worked in the tourism, we were a tourism office, tourism branch, we took on all sorts of different um, forms until it became the Hawaii Tourism Authority which is a separate entity, speaking of, they, they are an attached agency to DBED. And then I decided I wanted to make a change, and so I moved over uh, to the business development side and uh, got to find out more about some of the other um, industries and sectors that you know are growing in Hawaii. It, when you work in the tourism side, you're very focused on tourism. It's, I would it's hard to see everything else that's going on in the state. So it's been very interesting for me. It's been about 14 years now that I've been on the business development side. Very good. And business development, uh, how does that impact tourism? Uh, does that, is there a lot of opportunity for businesses to still get into that well, side of the economy? It's, it's interesting. There are so many links, and actually a lot of things start from tourism. For instance, you know, we work in helping companies that uh, try to get their uh, products overseas. Mm. And in a lot of cases, so many companies want to go into Japan because they see that when the Japanese tourists come here, they buy their products in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so naturally that starts to build a market for those products, you know, over in Japan. Sure, so that's uh, natural yeah, leap. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot, a lot of linkages. We work also in the international education side, trying mm -hmm, to um, mm -hmm. attract international students. A lot of that starts with maybe a family comes here for vacation and they learn more about Hawaii and, you know, and then can see sending, you know, the student can see coming to study here. Or, well, just and, it's, it's a nice middle ground too for people to send their their students from the Asian Rim to Hawaii. It's a nice transitionary place. You know, it's got cultures from different sides of the ocean, and and it's comfortable for them, and and right. they can get that foreign exposure that the parents are probably looking for. Exactly, that is that's, one of our selling points. Mark, um, you've, you've done things in the past as well, right? Uh, yes, I've, uh, I've been at DVED uh, just a little over three years now. Prior to that, I was working at a life science startup company or small company in Hawaii. Uh, and then prior to that, I was doing some economic development work uh, in Hawaii. And then prior to that, originally from uh, Northern California, I worked in Silicon Valley at a big Silicon Valley company, uh, Silicon Graphics, I don't know if people remember that company, uh, and then doing economic development work there. So I've kind of been 
worked for a large company, startup companies, and then also uh, economic development work. Mm. Well, you know, and that sounds like a perfect fit for, for business development in Hawaii, too, because these are some of the industries that we've been looking at for quite a while. Right, right, right. And I've sort of seen it from the uh, small company side, uh, and, uh, and then also kind of seen what other sort of governments, what other sort of economic development entities have done in other places as well. So a little bit of kind of what works, what doesn't, that type of thing. Very good. And you've been at DBED for three just, years? Just a little about over three years. I think that in November it was three years. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So, you know, you're both from DBED. You've been there for a long time. You're relatively new. But, you know, I, I, and I've been in Hawaii for since early 70s. And DBED's always been out there. They've always been doing things and they've, they've gotten bigger and they've done more and more. Um, but not only are they involved in the actual, you know, I guess the economic development arm for the state, but they also provide a lot of resources to help businesses um, tap into those opportunities too, don't they? Yes, definitely. Um, we may start. We, so some of the programs that our division does, is, um, I think as Jamie mentioned earlier, uh, we work at the Enterprise Zone program, which is basically an exchange for companies uh, increasing the, the, the number of employees they have in sort of economically distressed areas of the state. They, they can get tax incentives. And so that's a very active program that our division runs. Uh, let me ask some questions about that as we go forward, if you don't mind. Um, okay, enterprise zone. So there are going to be areas within the uh, the borders of Hawaii on the different islands right. um, that are identified as special areas that need some economic development. There's a. It's basically it goes by census track, and then there's a very specific formula, which is a little bit complicated. But you always have to go back to the last uh, ten year uh, census mm. for for the statistics on that. And then it's a county state partnership. And the counties actually choose the zones. Uh, our planning folks will show which areas of the state are eligible according to the definitions, but then the counties actually uh, designate the zones and then the governor approves of that. And those zones last for 20 years. And this program really started back in the early uh, 90s. So a lot of those zones now are coming up for renewal. So there's been some, some tweaks and changes. Some, some islands are very successful, like Maui. They're actually losing census tracts because, because they're doing well. well and so it they're worked. no longer, it works, it worked. Yeah, yeah. It worked, and that, that's exactly what you want to that's have That's exactly happen. it, yeah. But once, once the county and the state get together, they collaborate, they identify the area that this enterprise zone is going to be located, what's available in that zone? What makes it so attractive? Well, it, it depends on which uh, zone it is. It, some zones are very different. Some are pre uh, predominantly like ag kind of areas. Some are kind of urban areas. Uh, our Kaka'ako area here on Oahu actually is in an enterprise zone. Uh -huh. And that was uh, way before a lot of the, the condos and a lot of the current development you see. That will no longer be eligible when that zone uh, expires here in a couple of years. So those tax incentives uh, will no longer be available there. So depending upon the type of zone it is, it would be different type of incentives to promote whatever it is that they want to promote there. Right. And also, according to the, the Enterprise Zone statute, there's, there's, uh, it's only available to certain types of business activities and other certain industries. So ag is one of them, manufacturing, wholesaling, and then a couple of other sort of business activities are in the statute. So it's not available to retail and some other sectors. Right. So it's just specific it's to what, specific, what they want to, yeah. uh, you know, I guess, stimulate and, and right. to grow. Um, and what are some of the incentives that's available within the uh, enterprise zone? Well, within the enterprise zone, the state offers incentives, and that would be a uh, tax credit. And that starts, and it's for seven years, and it starts at uh, and it's a non-refundable tax credit, meaning you only get the credit if you owe the state money, but it starts at 80% and declines by 10% each year. You get a GET waiver, so you don't have to pay GET wow. on things sold in, in, the, in the zone or on, on, in that county. Um, and then the counties also have to offer up zones, and some of that may be uh, with the uh, property tax, mm -hmm. you know, if you put in a new building or something, they won't, the property tax in, uh, increase won't hit you for a couple of years. Some is just expedited permitting, that type of thing. But they actually, uh, the, the counties 
try to offer these incentives to sort of go along with their sort of economic development plans. And so the state wants to offer up, you know, the Enterprise Zone program as a tool for them to sort of reach their economic development objectives. Very good. And if somebody wanted to find out more information on this, where could they go? Oh, they can go to our website, which is invest.hawaii.gov. Uh, and, and there was all these pull-down menus, and just go to Enterprise Zones, and everything is described there, and everything is online, including the application. And then, because uh, these tax incentives are available to companies that increase job totals, and so when they enroll in the company, they get their sort of over seven years what the job totals have to be, and every year they, they go online and they report to us, and DBID certifies those things so that when uh, you, the, the company files its taxes, uh, that they can take those tax incentives. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's the, the, the our uh, exporting program. Yep. Exporting program, which is another program that you, that's that right. you yes. do. That's right. Very good. <laughs> and is that something you can speak to, Jamie? Is sure. There, okay. uh, so the state has received a $700,000 grant from the Small Business Administration. Um, and the whole point of that grant is uh, it's with, for the State Trade Expansion Program, STEP grant. Uh, for us, we call our program, we've labeled it High Step, um, <laughs> and it's to help companies uh, that are interested in exporting get into exporting, and those that are already exporting to expand. Very good. So, well, and I would imagine that uh, there may not be any percentages or demographic information on this, but I would imagine a lot of the companies in Hawaii would like to export if they're producing something. I mean, why not? That's just an extension of their market. Sure. You know? I mean, it's definitely a way for them to grow. Yeah. Hawaii's a limited market. Yeah. And, and, so, and, and the High Step program is designed, and we have three components to it. One is sort of the export uh, training and counseling. So companies that say, yes, I want to start an export program, I think my product will be popular, let's say, in Japan, but t to let them uh, go through all the steps needed and what they have to think about in terms of regulatory environments, you know, uh, cash flow, how you, uh, logistics and things with exporting. So that's one component is to do sort of the whole training part of it. And then, and then we do pavilions, mm -hmm. and then also we offer individual company assistance uh, for companies going into trade shows and things overseas. Is, is DBED a resource to help address some of the regulatory issues of getting into these markets as well? Uh, I think we can be a, a voice and an advocate in helping to work with other agencies, particularly maybe the you know federal agencies. Or And that's actually one of the things that um, as we try to help our companies, if they have any trade barriers, that's one of the things that we... Mm -hmm. Uh, that SBA wants to hear about so that they too can Good. kind of help at the federal level. So. Well, and that's one of the hats that I wear is uh, I'm on the board of uh, the regulatory fairness for the Small Business Administration. And I help try to identify these regulatory challenges or hurdles and, and then at the federal level try to do something about it. So, But I, I want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the exporting program. Uh, but we got to take a short break right now. Uh, and we'll be back in about... 60 seconds. So we'll continue this with this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're talking with DBID and we're finding out about uh, all the resources that are available to small businesses in Hawaii uh, to help them grow and, and prosper. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. 
This uh, episode, we're talking with DBED, and we're finding out about all of the resources that are available to small businesses throughout the state of Hawaii in, in trying to promote and increase the, uh, the success of their business. And we were just talking uh, about the export uh, program that DBED has and how that can really help uh, grow a business and get them to diversify into a, an international market. Uh, and so, Jamie, if if I was a business and I wanted to, to get into the exporting side of things, how would I do that? Well, under the High Step program, uh, you would go to our website. Which in, is? Which is invest.hawaii.gov <laughs> and under the exporting. Which is on the screen. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a, uh, you go to the High Step. And uh, like Mark was mentioning, so we have our, our training component and then we have some other elements, financial assistance and, and, and um, and our Hawaii pavilions. But what, what we want people to do, what we want companies to do is sign up because we're going to have a general intake form. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your company a little bit, um, about what product or service it is you want to sell overseas, what market are you interested in, um, and you know those kinds of things. And then we'll go from there. We're working closely with the Small Business Development Center and also the Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Is this a competitive uh, type of uh, program? Not, no. No, okay, not right. at all. Not not this part of it. There is a part of it that is a uh, the financial assistance is a is a competitive part. But we want companies to, to sign up so that uh, because we we want to take them through the process of learning about what it what it takes to export. Right. Um, so it's primarily an educational and awareness program on how to, to go through the process. Right. Right. I, initially, yes, okay. yes. Um, we are going to have a kickoff on January twenty fourth. And what is the kickoff? Uh, uh, it's uh, basically to make a formal announcement on the program. Uh, we want to invite uh, companies to come and learn more about what's Good. involved in the program Good. and how they can Good. sign up and how they can benefit um, and what you know what the different components are, what they can get out of it. Very um, good. And that would be that more information on that would be on the website as yes. well. Yes. Okay. Would right. the form be there to sign up? Uh, they don't have to s sign up um, to go to this January twenty fourth event. They don't have to sign the form. No registration then, or anything? Uh, you know? We'll have probably registration, but they okay. don't need to fill out the form to come okay. to this. Um, we want them to find out. Right. So even a company just yeah. thinking about right. exporting, they haven't even made that decision yet, should definitely come to this right. session right. to see about the resources and available. where is it going to be? It'll be at the Foreign Trade Zone. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, right that, downtown. That's here. right. Yeah. Yeah. The new yeah. Maxi, Homer Maxi, International yeah. Trade. There'll be signs up. Right. <laughs> the, the, newer, the newer side. Okay. You know. Well, yeah, well, that's a beautiful building over yeah. there, too, and it's it uh, two or three stories, and it, it's, it's it's a nice, yeah, nice rarely facility. used. I think I it looks brand new. Yeah. It's, it's a great building. <laughs> it is. Yeah, very good. All right, well, that's great. That's a, a great opportunity for somebody that's just maybe thinking about it. They could come out and learn more about it. They could find out some of the mechanics on how this works. Um, then if they are interested, then they sign up for the program itself, and then they could go through this. Um, and, and get a little bit more formal in the education. Uh, and then you mentioned finance. Now, we all know access to capital is always one of the biggest challenges that small businesses have. What does this mean when you say that there might be some financing? Let me take it up. So, uh, there's actually that's combined sort of with our Hawaii pavilions. We actually do pavilions where we'll take you know 20 companies, 30, 50 companies sometimes into a trade show. We uh, get the booth space, do all the branding and everything, and then companies can come and exhibit. One example of that is the Tokyo International Gift Show. We mm. take like you know over 50 companies into that show each wow. year in uh, September. Mm -hmm. It usually is. Um, but there's a lot of other companies in other industries and things where we don't do the Hawaii pavilions. Uh, um, and companies that maybe just are going overseas for business meetings and things like that. So for those types of companies, we have what we call sort of the, the company assistance program. And between $5,000 and $15,000 is available on uh, per application for companies uh, that are that have an export development program and are looking to uh, go into a particular market or expand in a, in a particular market and for that there's a very simple application but also we're looking for their export development plan and that export development plan is we want to see 
how they're going to get from point A to point B. Because since this is an SBA grant and also for our own sort of state metrics and things, we're looking at increasing exports. So that is a competitive process, is that we want to make funds available to companies that we think uh, can actually get from point A to point B. In other words, increasing exports, revenue, right. and be successful in the year that those, those funds are available. Well, you've got limited resources, and you want to make sure that you give it to those that have the highest probability exactly. of success. Right. You know, so there's got to be a ranking right. you know, right. that you go through right. to do right. that. Um, how many companies do you think usually get uh, through the process and actually get an, uh, an award of some kind? For last year, we had over, because we did the same program last year, although the amounts were lower. It was, I think, up to uh, 5,000. Up, up to 6,000. Up to 6,000 was the amount. Uh, but we had uh, 72 applications wow. we put in for that. Wow, that's good, about, good yeah. participation. Yeah. Probably yeah. about, we'll end up with about 60 companies actually that actually got funded. Very good. So, but, but we expect this year, because we raised the, we raised, uh, the, the ask amount um, that will be, that it'll be a little bit more competitive. Goes all the way up to 15,000? 15, 15, right. 15, yeah, that's, right. that's a big increase. Right, in the application we're not looking for them really just to talk about, let's say, one trade show they want to go to or something. We really want to see sort of a whole plan mm -hmm. on how maybe, yes, that trade show fits into their uh, export development and their market expansion somewhere. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and what What's interesting here is that we've only really talked about two of the different programs, um, right. but DBIT's got a lot of lot of things going on too, don't they? Right. Well, we've got our state energy office, and you know they're they're they cover a whole whole gamut of, of energy issues from you know policy to some of the tax credit things and so forth. Uh, we have our creative industries, which uh, mm. film the film, film office okay, falls film office, under. Yeah. Um, we have an attached uh, agencies like HTDC, the High Technology Development Corporation, mm -hmm. and also Innovate Hawaii, which uh, has a manufacturer's uh, grant, which fits nicely into this export development because it's how you scale up your company to meet uh, production you know, figures if you're going to be expanding and going into other markets. So th there's a lot of different programs that are available out there and a lot of different ways that companies can take advantage of the opportunity. Um, and I know you, uh, we talked uh, during lunch, we had a brief conversation, and, and I know the Business Action Center used to be part of DBED, but then it mm -hmm. kind of transferred over to the to, uh, DCCA. Right. Um, but that was an excellent idea, and, and that worked, I think, has worked very well over the years. You know, and, and for the audience who has not been familiar with what the uh, Business Action Center is, uh, you might be able to explain it better than I am, but it's a pretty much a one-stop shop to really get the business That's set right. up and running. It gives right. you a, a head start in, in getting through all of the GET mm -hmm. and, and registration and, right. and DOL numbers and all that. They'll, they'll help you put your application together, and they'll tell you, based on what kind of business you, you are starting, what, what you'll need. You know, right. if, you ha if you need a special license or, you know all those kinds of things. So yeah, they really, really take you through. They're, they're invaluable. Yeah, we, yeah. we refer them, uh, companies. Yeah, and I, I refer a lot of people over there, and I've been there myself occasionally. Um, number one, because I'm helping a client out, but number two, because I want to go through the experience and see how it okay. works. And you know, rarely have I seen a line over there, and if there was, it's only a few people, and you can actually get through, and the people that are working there are usually very knowledgeable about mm -hmm. what needs to be done, and yeah. they can expedite things. And yeah. then they also, I, uh, bring in resources sometimes like I believe I don't know if they still do it but once a week they bring in some uh, from the Bar Association some uh, uh, yeah. attorneys uh, to right I think there was a sign-up sheet one time when I was there where they can sign up for this so yeah, yeah so they'll bring in other resources to help business that's very well. good but that was something that started by DBED yes right. yeah. yes right. so now tell me uh, you know we haven't spent a lot of time on the T part so it's DBED plus T yeah, and, uh, but tourism, of course, is our lifeblood here in Hawaii. I mean, that's where all of our, our you know, a lot of our economic uh, activity comes from. Um, what, are there specific programs in the tourism side um, kind of like to, to, you know, create new businesses or help businesses grow and, and do things? I mean, is there the same type of stimulus there that there would be in other areas? Uh, I don't believe so. I can't really speak for HTA, but uh, you know we've we've worked with them um, 
for instance, when we talked earlier about uh, the, trying to attract international students. Mm -hmm. So some of some of the areas where we think that there's, uh, you know, where where and we can work together. But um, in general, um, HTA, I don't believe, has programs to help. It's uh, a pretty mature industry. Right, so, right. you know, but, but I also know that there's a lot of peripheral business around tourism. I mean, everybody thinks of tourism as just the the hotels and the resorts and but there's a there's an awful lot of support services mm -hmm. that that support that you know for example the, the laundry business you know and mm -hmm. and transportation you know and the trolleys and and then all the gift shops and and all of the different support type of businesses that surround that um, but I would imagine that some of them get help from other areas too it doesn't have to come from the tea part right of the tea bag. right although I will say um, it the program doesn't necessarily help the business itself, but they, they do have funds that help um, increase uh, tourism products so mm -hmm. that there are more things for visitors to, to experience when they come here. Uh, when I was there, uh, I was very involved actually in, in that part where, you know, increasing the number of festivals or those types of things uh, that are yeah, experiences yeah. for for, um, right. for uh, visitors. Right, down in Waikiki right, and, right, right. and that sort of thing. So right. they do have uh, funding for those types of things, for tourism product development. Right, and, now I, I'm, and, and this is kind of off topic, but a little related. I'm just curious about this. Um, the Aloha Tower was something that was uh, you know, going to be developed as a tourist destination or a point that, that, that they would go to. But I guess that's all kind of changed now since HPU has come in and taken over that area. But you still got the Aloha Tower down there, and that's, that's a historical place. So is it completely outside of the tourism uh, focus now? or, or because I, I can't, Every time I look at that Aloha Tower, I can't think of the history that's behind it. Right. Um, so nothing planned yeah. to try to get the tourists out there. I guess HPU is just kind of taken over. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Well, but HPU has got a lot of international students mm -hmm. too. Right. So, yes. and I think, from what I understand, right. a percent, a large percentage of their student body is actually international. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a. A, a well, tourism yeah, a international tourism. piece to that so mm -hmm. maybe that little tower is helping with that right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. well you know we're we're about ready to wrap up um, I would very much like to have you come back again for another show and uh, and maybe we can talk more about the other different programs that are going on maybe you can give us an update on the kickoff that's going to be happening in July I, I think you know January January. Yes. Oh, Jan January. Oh, January. Yeah. So that's, right, that's right around January. the corner. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, well, then I don't know if I can have you come back before then, yeah. but we can <laughs> certainly mention <laughs> it. Right. But, you know, there's, there's just so much that the DBED is doing, and it's such an important component of what we're trying to do, at least economically in Hawaii, that uh, we just need to keep the word out and create that awareness. So, very good. I, th I appreciate you both being on the show. Well, Hopefully, we'll you. see you thank again. You thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday afternoon from 2 to 2.30. We focus on small business topics, uh, help businesses to grow and expand uh, and prosper here in Hawaii. Uh, until next week, aloha, and we'll see you then. <laughs>